the sensor troubleshooting video will give you an in-depth process on how to recognize indicators that may cause issues with your sensor readings. You may be experiencing the following sensor reading jumping around intermittently or maybe just reading incorrectly or displaying just dashes and not reading any values at all with the high and low temp alarms going off. That's when it's time you need to take steps in making this problem go away. First, let's examine the internal aspects of the controller's programming. Now first we want to make sure that the sensor self-test is disabled. You would go ahead and hit enter menu, then go system setup, and then scroll down in system setup till you get to advanced settings. Now in advanced settings you'd hit next until you get to the line that says self-test. And as you can see the self-test on this controller is disabled. Note Firmware versions below V1.04.xx or the 1600 controller or the 1800 controller do not have this feature. Hit back to get to the system setup menu. And next we want to go ahead and check the sensor mapping. Go ahead and hit previous until we get to setup inputs. Now in setup inputs go ahead and hit enter menu. And as you can see, the in temp is serial sensor 1, and the relative humidity as well is serial sensor 1. So this sensor is in fact mapped correctly. Hit back. Also go into calibrate inputs to make sure that no values in the adjust row have been inputted to change the adjust value. Now the raw value is the actual sensor reading, and the adjust value is the offset of the adjust. But what we're going to do is make this real fast be zero so that the adjust value and the calorie value are the same. Hit back till you get to the home screen. Since our self-test is disabled, sensors map correctly, and there's no calibration affecting our sensor reading, let's examine the external aspects from the controller to the sensor. The first thing you want to do is inspect your sensor wiring on the relay outputs CLK, Data0, Vout, and GND. You want to ground the shield within the fork conductor cable and check the sensor wiring to make sure that they're all snug and tight. You could also test the in temp port by simply moving Data0 to Data1 and see if the out temp is displayed which will make the in temp blank and the out temp populated because you changed the data port. If your sensor reading still not populated, you may want to check if in fact you extended your sensor wiring, the junction box between the extension. You want to open the junction box up if present and see if there's any corrosion, moisture, or contamination, and if it's present, remove it. Also, check the sensor line and inspect the sensor line for cuts or damage which will in fact affect your readings. Your sensor distance from the controller is important as well. The max distance is 150 feet for effective sensor readings. You also want to make sure that the line that's going from the controller to the sensor is clear from interference sources such as voltage, motors, inverters, etc. You may also want to try toggling on and off the switches on the front panel one at a time to see if the sensor stabilizes when doing so. Now at the sensor itself, you want to disassemble the radiation shield that houses the sensor and examine the PCB board that's inside to see if there's any corrosion, moisture, or contamination buildup. If silicone is not present covering the sensor cable to the PCB soldering points, check at that location for oxidation and use a fine metal brush to gently remove it, then put it all back together again. You can also detach the sensor from its current location and put it right next to the controller itself to see if the readings recover. Next, if you're still experiencing sensor issues, you may want to measure the step-down voltage from the 12-volt DC power supply. 
marginal voltage can also be a factor on the sensor's functionality as well. If you have a 12 volt power cube and it's marginal, you want to replace it. If you have a 12 volt DIN rail power supply and it's marginal, you can dial up the voltage to the correct value. And finally, you can try powering the iGro itself from a different circuit entirely using an extension cord across the way or even an inverter plugged into a car on site to see if the sensor stabilizes. In conclusion, if these steps provided do not correct your sensor issues, please call our support for further assistance. And that's our video in troubleshooting the digital temp humidity sensor on the iGirl 1400 controller.